Very good. So, Bonte, perhaps you've got a few remarks. Yeah, so um, this day, it's been a year since Bhante has passed away. Um, we can believe, actually, a year is gone. Um, he lives in our minds. Every time we radiate metta, uh, he comes to our hearts. Um, I take Bhante as my meditation teacher ever since I uh, visited Bhante. I was invited to United States by Bhante, and um, I have been practicing metta, and it has greatly benefited me. And I now teach Bhante's uh, twin practice uh, everywhere I go. So, um, and so it has ripple effects. Um, and I think we all have benefited from Bhante's teachings. And when we talk about Bhante, um, we... Uh, cannot forget the existence of Sister Kema, who also um, was an impactful person at Dhammasukha and outside, wherever she traveled. Um, this was my first contact with Dhammasukha, seeing her um, in Sri Lanka. Um, she didn't know how things happened in Sri Lanka, and she lived near where I lived, and she posted a banner like thing handwritten in front of the gate um, where she, you know in of the house where she stayed uh, saying something like she will be presenting dhamma talks but no one came and i was the only one there um i wanted to i wanted to um somehow you know um i i felt i strongly felt like i should go and um um, make a connection and 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 he you know I remember she this you know she took all these pieces of paper with dependent origination especially that wheel that she was so fond of yeah and um, I remember seeing the breaking of wheel image um, from her and this was um, so important to me to see that from um, non Sri Lankan because we take these dhammas for granted. Um, and um, and I listened to her very carefully, and this is true dhamma coming out of her. And she almost repeated Chachaka Sutta. She could, she had that skill. She memorized the cha six sets of six. And this was, this put me into some shame that I haven't even memorized a single sutta like that. <laughs> but who is her teacher? Mm. So um, I started uh, learning. Um, more about Bhante from her. So despite having her own challenges when traveling and also troubles in her personality at times, as we all know, those who have been close to her know that um, that about her, uh, she did something and she was an essential part of um, Bhante's life and Dhammasukha as well um, before David joined and uh, took all the things to his shoulders and now Kristen and many others are um, you know doing the moving Dhamma peacefully and that is um, that is something that makes Bhante happy um, he Bhante has been this um, revolutionary teacher um, not many monks offer teachings um, in that way uh, authentic way um, close to the Buddha's teachings uh, with the actual practice, I felt um, so moved with uh, metta and karuna mudita upekha come into come you know come into my life uh, as actual teachings because in Sri Lanka we emphasize more on breathing meditation and insight meditation so much, but not the sublime states. So. Um, I remember spending my um, first rains in Dhammasukha um, 10 years ago, actually. Um, and um, that retreat is unforgettable. But I never wanted to know where I was in terms of my, of my practice. Bhante never commented, and I never asked. 
we had this uh, relationship um, that that was somehow we we both um, knew our existence and Bante never um, uh, up disappointed me through his teachings, through his wisdom and through his metta. It was all there, um, especially at times when um, when Bante asked me to sort of teach Vinaya to Sister Kema. Vinaya is the code of discipline for a nun and for monks. This didn't go well. Um, and we would end up, you know, it's almost like exchanging heated conversations. But I, I was just absorbing all that. I didn't know how to respond because she's not willing to change that easily. And we would go to Bante's cabin and Bante remains silent and all that problem disappears yeah. and <laughs> Bante didn't have to say anything but sister and I had a very like mother and son relationship um, through through and through I always wanted to support her um, so that is how things evolved um, and I think Bante Samit from Peace House um, we both think that Bante gave up certain like especially he gave up on his body before even he he became ill mm. he didn't care about it he, he he all he was interested in was swim practice tranquility wisdom insight meditation and how amazing that we had um, the fortunate karma to meet such a, a selfless monk uh, teaching pure dhamma and uh, and that is why um, dhamma is alive and is being practiced by all of us so i am saying big sadhus to bante sadhu 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 thank you bante for your wisdom your metta changing our lives and introducing us to a very relaxing way of um, practicing and getting the benefit of taste of dhamma there's more to say, but um, I think uh, maybe um, that is good enough. And um, I wholeheartedly wish Bhante and Sister Kema the uh, uh, Nibbanic um, peace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bhante Krusla. That was a great introduction and gave us all a little bit, a reminder of what's what's gone on over the years and your relationship to him. Of course, my relationship to Bonte was, uh, as his kapia, uh, I was just proclaimed it. Sister Kama said, you're the kapia. And I said, what? And what's a kapia? Well, you help help the monk. Uh, you help him to do to get his things. If he needs this, you go there. If you need, he needs something from Walmart, you go there. If he needs some Something, something to drink. You go get some drink. If he needs an air ticket to Japan, you make it. I said, "Okay, I can do all of that." So, uh, I think also she was in a in a sense a copy, a big copy early on, but then later, as I came over here and got things a little bit more organized around 2010, um, you know, I I started to think about what we could do and what what we could be. And there was another fellow at the time. His name was Ron. And he came here to live as well. And so there was me and Ron. Ron was a pharmaceutical guy who had retired. He, I'm just a young guy, 40 years old. But he was involved in helping um, build some of the cabins and laying things out. And he was kind of the building guy. And I was kind of the office and everything else guy. And then sister would be uh, cooking. And um, there'd be a few meditators here and there. And it was a crazy time, I got to say. Um, but after a little while, Ron decided it just wasn't for him. And he left and I kept going and and took over a lot of those things. Um, and of course, Rose and Jerry came. Um, they were actually, they were already here, a uh, local uh, married couple. And they're still here. Rose and Jerry are still here cooking and doing the, uh, the hammering away and... Um, and all through that time, uh, Bhante's been watching the coming and go and the growing of Dhammasukha. And now it's been a year. And, you know, what happened? Well, 
retreats are going. We've we've gotten through two, maybe three retreats already. We had a winter retreat. We had a uh, a retreat that was a, a a smaller retreat with the solar eclipse. That was fantastic. It was great. And uh, Bonte Cusa is going to lead us in a retreat just uh, next week, next starting next Thursday. And then I'm going to do a few retreats. And um, so we're going to keep going. And we've got uh, everything's booked. We've got more students than ever. And then Jordan's out there working on more TWIM retreats out for Easter next April. Plug for Jordan. And uh, <laughs> Uh, many other things are 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 happening, and then we have Callan and An Andrew, his dad, who who put together the Freedom of Mind organization uh, with the idea of growing to him even more. Um, and uh, Delson will be helping to support that organization, and he'll be here next year teaching as well. So we have lots of things happening. We have online retreats, and Zoom retreats. So we're carrying out uh, Bonte's legacy. And so far, I think I'm okay with them because I was sitting in the Dhamma Hall. I looked over his picture and it was like, yeah, okay, you're doing okay. You're doing okay. So I was like, oh, that's a big compliment. So I think he smiled at me and just said, carry on. And because I always felt like I was in trouble doing, you know, not doing everything right. And, you know, went through this, uh, went through the, the gauntlet with him and came up, but I think he's good. I think he's good. He sees everything that's going on, and and here we are. So, uh, what I wanted to do is present a few pictures of the stupa of the of the day that he actually died, and we'll remember that, and then we'll move on to Kirsten. Well, I'm going to then repeat a few suttas, just short suttas. And then we'll um, move on to Kirsten, and we're going to have some really a lot of fun looking at some very early pictures of Bonte uh, when he was two years old and on, and even a prom date. <laughs> but let me um, share my screen here. So this was the morning uh, that he died, um, probably around 11 o'clock, we had just left um, St. Joe Manor where he passed and Bonte Kusla had led um, a ceremony with uh, Bonte Sumita, who was on the left. And they both did a ceremony over his body at the time. And Delson was there, myself, and Abuelo Obasa, and Kirsten. And this is kind of what it looked like. This is the room where he died, and a monk's robe was put on him, and Bonte Kusala did some ceremony, some chanting, some blessings, um, so he could move on to his next birth. When we got back to the center, there was this, there was this rainbow in the sky, a very different kind of rainbow. This doesn't really give it justice, but there was a circle around the sun that was all like a rainbow. And some people speculated this this was something. This could have been a deva or him. Who knows? So the sky was really lit up. Like today, June 27th. Um, it's all clear today. So this is his bowl uh, that he uh, used for alms round um, all throughout Asia. And his bag and, um, yeah, another bag below that. So so this is in his cabin, and I'm going to show you a little bit of some of the things that are in his cabin. We've made his cabin kind of a memorial cabin. There's a cat. A lot of pictures there and me and Jordan, Jordan. Some Japan pictures. That's his childhood cup. There's a transistor radio. This is a, his mom, Ruth. And there he is as a young monk. His passport pictures. 
his high school diploma, some of the early books, Japan, Japan, Japan. He did this artwork. This is a, a sewn piece of artwork, and he actually did that. Um, more pictures, Sister Kema. This is in Hiroshima, actually, in Japan. Here's the bed, and we're back to the to the cat. The cat is a security guard now. And here we're outside. We're going to go over to the stupa and take a look. And this is what it looks as of yesterday. There's no real sound, so don't worry about it. Pond is on the left. We put in a bunch of roses around this, which seem to be pretty happy. So here's our top part from Indonesia. And just a little memorial piece of marble. It's also for Sister Kama and Usi Lananda. Their ashes are in here as well. And who is worthy of a stupa? A disciple of a realized one. That's the one that's here. When we left this unfinished. We thought it was kind of an interesting look. And then the gold color of Burma. Because he was a Burmese monk. And the pond. Some dead roses, unfortunately. We have lights on it. I'll show you what those lights do at night here shortly. There goes Jerry on the mule. Now, at night, this was taken in the winter. Well, actually, a few months ago, three months, maybe. Taken by Kirsten. And this is what the stupa looks like at night. We have lights down here creating designs. And then these um, glow. And that's it. And there you go. There's some highlights uh, of the memorial and the uh, day that he died. Um, so I'm going to share just a few suttas. Uh, okay. So from the Angutra Nikaya, monks, the appearance of six things is rare in the world. What six? Now, these are the six things um, that you all need to attain Nibbana. You need, number one, a realized one, a perfected one, a fully awakened Buddha. So 
We're 2,600 years in and we have that. Number two, you need a person who teaches the teaching and training proclaimed by that realized one. And that, of course, is Bonte, Bimala Ramsey, as well as other people. But Bonte really rediscovered Buddhism by thinking about Sutta 111 and the Anapanasati Sutta and the Satipatthana Sutta and realized that there was this step, the tranquilization step, that was the key to everything. And we have then now been taught this. Now, what else do you need to realize Nibbana? You need rebirth in a civilized region. Well, I think we can all say that where we live is pretty civilized and it has all of the comforts of a civilization. It has law and order and, and all of that. Number four is you need unimpaired sense faculties. And uh, so you can hear and see and touch and sense everything. And six are it. And you need to be bright and clever. And I'm sure everybody's bright and clever and not slow and, and fast on the uptake. And you need to have enthusiasm for skillful qualities. Be happy, be uh, excited um, to, to get more moral, uh, to, to give more, to learn more, to be more wise. The appearance of these six things is rare in the world. Now, this then comes with a short warning, which is more appropriate for today. The guarantee. There are four things that no one can guarantee. Not an ascetic, a Brahmin, a God, a Mara, a Brahma, or anyone in the world. What for? No one can guarantee that someone liable to old age will not grow old. No one can guarantee that someone liable to sickness will not get sick. No one can guarantee that someone liable to death will not die. No one can guarantee that the bad deeds done in past lives, corrupting, leading to future lives, hurtful, resulting in suffering and future rebirth, old age and death will not produce their result. These are the four things that no one can guarantee. Not an ascetic, a Brahman, a god, a Mara, a Brahma, or anyone in the world. And so, um, Bhante's death reminds us all that we need to continue our meditation because we're all liable to growing old, death, disease, dying, and a whole mass of suffering. Any comments about any of this before we move on to uh, Sister Kirsten's? All right, well, let's 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 get some baby pictures. All right, Kirsten, take it away. Okay, well, first of all, I just wanna say thank you for everybody for being here because I think it's really great to see um, so many familiar faces, we're all, friends in this group. So it's really, really nice to see everybody. And I know we don't have time to maybe say hello to everybody, but it's, we're all here and it's wonderful to see you all. And thank you, Bhante Kusala, and for sharing um, Memorial. Thank you, David and, and Upeka and anybody else who is about to share afterwards too. So I'm going to share, so basically I've been putting together a little PowerPoint presentation um, where I've scanned some old, old photos of Bontes. And so in the past day or so, I've been trying to puzzle things together because there's nobody here to tell us exactly who is in these photos. Um, and so... Anyway, but they're a lot of fun and just doing it, just putting it together has given me a new sense of Bonte's life, like kind of a little different perspective. And it's just, uh, you'll see it for yourself, but just a sense that he was somebody that just took a ride through life with a big smile, not clinging to anything. And just kind of really an example of how he taught. So um, with that, I think we'll go ahead and try to figure out how to share my screen here. So,
Okay, so can you guys see this? Yep, looks good. Okay, so I'm if I start a slide. Yeah, from, there you go. Right yep. here, from the beginning. Okay, good. I can there. still see. Perfect. Okay, so this is the one year anniversary of um, Bonte um, Vimalaramsi's passing. And uh, we, one of these, some of these photos, we actually found a few months after uh, Bonte died. And so they were kind of new to us. And so we're still, we don't even have all of them up. We're still kind of looking through them and going, wow, this is really interesting seeing his life. So um, let me share some with you now. Feel free if somebody wants to say something to just uh, unmute yourself and speak up. Um, I I don't have all the knowledge. I have to make myself a little note about his birth, his death, when he ordained. But I really don't um, have a like a perfect biography or anything like that. But just here's some pictures. So let's take a look. Okay. So here we have him at three months old and six months old, some baby pictures. And I will say that there was a lot of, this is out of an album that had some pretty significant um, water damage, but still the photos are great. So it's very sweet. The sweetness shows through here. And then we have him here at nine months, holding his teddy bear, it looks like, or- um, yeah. You can or see the red hair starting to come in. Curly red hair. Um, I see. Okay, this is just a little bit closer. One year and three months. Closer there. Okay, so here's the album that we found with a lot of interesting uh, photos. So here, there's a photo of, of his kindergarten class. Um, and here, here he is, and I don't know if these are friends or siblings. I'm not really sure here, but this is a young picture of... Yeah, and um, look at the car behind there, I might point out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we've got a few good car photos. <laughs> and then here is a picture of him with his mother. Let's see here. Let's see. I have to move the little toolbar. Try to move it. No, it doesn't say the year. Okay. Yeah, and and just to make clear, it's his name was Marvel Logan. He was a oh, marvel. Did I say that? Yes. Um. So here, I was really looking for photos of his dad, and here. Believe this is him with his dad at the beach. Yeah, this says, is in Chicago. Here. And some other sweet little photos here. Um, okay, let's go on. Now, here's an, a little interesting thing. Um, he joined the Methodist Church in 1958, something we didn't really. Yeah, he kept trying to tell us he was Jewish. He found out at 35, but but then he joined the Methodist Church. Mark, any comments? Yes. Hey, Antra. Yes. Yeah, his mother his mother was Jewish and she had kept that a secret in the family. Oh. Oh, because there he they had, I want to say, a little bit of an anti-Semitic uh, uh, frame of reference. And so she kept that her secret. And finally, she uh, she informed him uh, later on in life. And he was very surprised. So uh, huh. I don't know if he, can, if he shared that with his brothers. But uh, <laughs> I do remember when he... Uh, he came. <clears throat> he came to visit us, and he told me that. And I, I said to him, "Okay, uh, now repeat after me." <laughs> <laughs> and he he looked at me kind of funny, and I said, "Oi, vey is near." 
<laughs> so <laughs> that was that. That was that. So yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, okay, let's go on. Here's a few more photos. There were a lot of photos from 1960 in this album. Here's one of them. Um, now this is at his eighth grade graduation. And I just noticed actually that somebody had drawn a little arrow right there. I see <laughs> out there. Uh, but there's some better or closer picture here also at his eighth grade graduation. Here. And you just get a sense of what a wonderful family that that Bonte had the influence and the spiritual um, quality yeah. of this. I believe there's nine people, nine siblings. And his father died when he was young, and then she remarried, and there was a stepfather. Yeah. And then there are these photos at the beach. Now, these first photos are a little bit hard to tell, but they're just so beautiful. I couldn't resist putting them in here. So I don't know if, if anybody else knows. Um, um, here's if these are sisters or friends. And then this one, there's no... Um, Label yeah, I, I would bet they're sisters because he had a sister in Atlanta who who last couple years ago was 90. He's the youngest one. And then he had another one in East St. Louis, mm -hmm. which we never could figure out where she actually was. So those were two that I, I heard about. Maybe that was the only two. And the rest were boys, all older. I can look at this this photo. I think it's just beautiful. And you can tell these are the tall um, Logan boys here, I'm sure. Yeah. And again, maybe sisters, friends playing at the beach. And another one, this one is really fun also. You take a look here. Somebody's being buried in the uh, sand. And maybe that's him, but I can't quite tell. Hmm. Doesn't look like him. Mm -hmm. No, um, is that San Diego the question is um yeah, it could be. Yes, it is. Uh it said Del Mar, so that's oh okay, okay. So so she's in so they're in Escondido then. That that's right. Yeah, okay. San Diego. All right, so here we go. So now um I don't know his history with basketball, but I know that he liked to play basketball. So Oh, yeah. no, he was quite a basketball player in college. And a few other fun photos here. In 1960. Okay, this one, I love this picture right here. This is a mom holding up his pants. I think this is making up uh, so it says Marvel's Pajama Pants, 1964. I think it's saying that he was very tall. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then this beautiful photo right here of mom in the kitchen in Chicago. Her name's Ruth. And then... And, and I believe she died in 2009 and they went out and got a lot of stuff from the house and brought it all out here. And I've, if you just, that stove was here up until a few years ago, we decided we finally didn't need Bonte's old stove. Now, didn't we also get the refrigerator here? That's say. right. And it went on for years. Yeah, that's right. Um. Okay, so here's another photo that is a little bit of a mystery, um, but it says Daddy, Marvel, and Neil at the cemetery is what it says in the album. Does it really? Okay. Um, and it might have here 
So I'm not sure if that is it when it says daddy, if that's his dad or um could be. Yeah. I don't know. And you could see that he's six four, six five, and Neil's six nine. Now, here's the we were looking and looking for it, and this is the photo, I believe, of mom and dad right here. So there's not very many. There's a lot of pictures of kids and and uh, but this here's mom that, um, and his precious dad that he talks about in his story of forgiveness and mm. impact of losing him and how hard that was and how he got through that. So I you know I did a little search because I was trying to find the year of uh, how old old Monte was when his dad died and it said. Um, something about that his dad's passing away this was chat gpt had a profound influence on his spiritual life and what he went on to do that was interesting um okay so here we have a baseball if that was uh if that was a picture in 54 then he had to be at least eight years old when that was taken so uh, so if his father was alive at that time then then you would know that uh maybe he passed close to that time or after that yeah yeah eight or nine is one of or nine is one of the ages we were thinking it could be yeah so this is him right here in the back row Mm -hmm, sure. on this baseball team and then here's a really fun one but large right team. Stuart that's right uh, his dad took him on sales trips uh, in Chicago so this is really when he was really young and so does anyone recognize w which one he is which well, number it's 22 right here <laughs> 22 yeah yeah <laughs> You can just recognize that smile. <laughs> All right. So here, okay, here's his graduation day and the and prom. So, um, okay, so here we have a photo. And this is Marvel right here and three other young men and four young women. So I believe this right here would be... Um, the four oh, prom 64 oh, yeah. 1964 and there's one there's a picture that's a little bit better i'll show you guys in a little bit also the two of them but here's marvel mom so he, was, he was 18 yeah so high school graduation right yeah and here's them and what is the next one? And this is the one that's really pretty amazing. So this is all dinner at the Logans uh, and then to prom, 1964. So it looks like they had a, a family dinner at, at home. And then here is the photo that she has to get a look at here. Another great iconic little photo. Let's see. Marvel and Who this else? and two cars oh people uh, entering. I, I, i'll let them in kirsten okay. All go right. back to the dinner photo dinner? okay let's yeah let's just see who zoom in on yeah okay how do you think the close i couldn't quite tell yeah okay you can't really tell who's I wonder if that isn't him and uh, facing his back facing to us. Yeah, it could be. Right that here. looks like. Yeah. Hmm. So here he is at his 21st birthday. Huh. Let's smile here. Wow, he looks. Wait, is that him? Um, well, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Different kind of hair going on here oh yeah okay i see the huh. 
birthday party. Uh-huh. 1967. Oh. Wait a minute. Okay. So from here to here, everything changes. <laughs> we <laughs> jump so ahead. Now we jump ahead to the, the in-between period. So there's a few photos of, like of Bob. the 70s. Would it be, would you call it seeking? The seeking time? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. So. He was a very cool 60s, 70s dude. Very cool. Fun photos here. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> I, I made sure it was okay to share this and everyone was okay with it. So hopefully it is now. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, it's 1976. He was actually at Still Point in California at that point. And uh, I don't know where the heck that would have taken. I th think, yeah, not sure. And another, this is beautiful. Now, this has a lot of damage to the photo here, but this is just a beautiful yeah, it's photo. a great picture. Really nice. And another one that's, I think, really great. Yeah, that was probably taken at still point. I think I recognize the background. Could make a great little poster. Yes, and you're right. Okay, so then there's two pages of some really cool photos again that we didn't know would be here. And so um it looks like this page and the next page are all taking place. And these are when he took novice ordination, as far as I can tell. So let's see. Yeah, up. this must be Half Moon Bay, is it? I don't know. There it is. So this was an 82. It says he became ordained yeah. six. So I assume then that he was um, a novice until then. I remember this monk. Uh, I remember seeing him. So San Francisco for sure. Do you know who the monk is? I don't know. No. Okay. All right. So there it is. You see his happiness. And then this is really beautiful too. This is, I feel like the kind of the gem here. So it says here, moved into circle of monks. And at the top here, you can see it says ordination of Marvel Logan. So I can just imagine how happy he must have felt. Now, do you, let's see. Now, yeah, go over to the other one. So you, this is Zusi Lananda. Right here. Right here, looking. He, he would be the preceptor. It looks look at what's in his hand. It looks like a cell phone, but it's not. Yeah, um, no. And over here, some people offering gifts. Really beautiful. Can you imagine what a moment this is in his life here? Um, so if anybody does want to say anything, please feel free to do it. Uh, we'll just kind of go on here. So I don't know who did this. If Andre, did you do this or did his mom do this? This was a before and after ordaining photo. And I was thinking maybe Andre had done this one. I, I, I didn't do that. So I don't know. Who did that for for the album? So this was again the album that got a lot of damage to it. But again, you can see his before and his after and the change. You can just see the brightness in his face here too. Amazing. Um, and then there's some various photos that um, here and there that I'm not really sure. These were ones for some reason I was thinking Andre that you had done these, but I. These were during our visit um, to Malaysia. I think it was in 1988. I mean, 1998. Well, I'm getting all screwed up. The year before he came back, he came back in 98. Mm -hmm. we, we visited him a year before that in Malaysia. So 
So I think we may have given some of those pictures to his mother. Hmm. Okay, so maybe she did this. Right. She she still put it together um, because we we kept contact with his mother all the time that, during the time that he was in Asia. He was difficult to to communicate with, so from time to time his mother and I or Mark would call each other and say, have you heard from Ponte? <laughs> And then we, you know, we'd share the news. Okay. Uh, and no, his name was not always Vimla Ramsey. Do you want to go back to that photo, Pearson? Which one? Yeah, here. Reverend Uz Sirasado. So I believe that's... Oh, that his... He was given that in time. He's been ordained a couple of times. And uh, Sirasado could have been the first one in um, in Thailand. Um, but then later on, Usila Nanda gave him Vimala, and then the Burmese added Ramsey. So it was, uh, what was it, uh, radiant uh, uh, light. So uh, radiant, yeah, Mr. Clean is what they called it. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, just a footnote on that. Um, he did come back from Asia. And he took off the ropes for about six months to travel the United States and visit with every one of his family members. And at that time, he didn't feel that he would be able to do that in the robes. And then when he was finished with that visit, he said, I am taking the robes again forever. Ah, uh, okay. That, okay. Cool, thank you. Oh, here's another beautiful photo. I love this one. Okay, so here's one that shows Bonte's sense of humor. He would often talk about the robes being difficult to wear whenever there's a wind. So anyway. Um, yeah, well, it says he didn't really ride this, but he did ride, uh, ride a BMW motorcycle. Because um, I, I tried to get on, on it myself and nearly the bike fell over luckily i caught it but uh it was a giant bmw and i was riding around on my honda 90 this is about 1976 or so oh. i think it's just making fun here yeah. but he did have a motorcycle oh what's um, that? yeah he had um he had uh he did a lot of riding and actually achieved a uh, in the motorcycle community the uh, status of riding a thousand miles in one day oh that's right yeah so that was very unusual and it took a lot of uh, a lot of energy and stamina to be able to do that but he was an avid uh, motorcyclist and uh, he he and his roommate were both when they when we first met them they were both riding uh, and uh, when uh, in 1973 when we had the fuel crisis uh, sometimes he would come out and they'd find people had drained the, the fuel out of the gas tanks of their cycles at night and they had to figure out how to get some gas to get get to work that day so anyway okay so but this one do you know anything about these monks? I don't. Okay. All right. Here's another very lovely photo. Um, now look. Oh, that there. guy. With, so this is monks. Malaysia, right? And and there's Curtis. Oh. Yeah, 1996, and I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh. the picture below where he's talking to the little girl, that's our son, Curtis, who's going to be coming to retreat. <laughs> oh, okay. So where was this taken then? Uh, you know, Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur, probably, but we did travel to Penang and uh, okay. 
other some other place up in the mountains of mm -hmm. in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So here's another photo with Bonte, Sister Kema, and some other people. I'm not really sure the background of this photo mm -hmm. either. I don't know. And uh, this is 2006. So Bonte went to a world conference maybe three times, 2006, 2011, and did he go in 2014? 17. Oh, 20... 2017. Uh -oh. This was 2006. Yeah, this and... is six. And this is who he's meeting with here. They put together a beautiful album of his visit there and presented it. So we have that and it's in really good condition. And then this is also part of that conference. And another photo, which is a little hard to see. And then here's the final photo. And do you remember the name of name of the Venerable the Ensign Joe? He was the head monk of the entire place in Kobe, Japan. Yeah. So anyway, there he is saying goodbye to Bonte. Thank you very much, Kirsten. Thank you. Definitely keep this presentation around. Yeah, so we're going to add to it and we're going to keep improving it and, and getting data down and Eventually, write a little book about him. Right. But every time I think about doing it, I think of so many things. I don't know how to com compile it into a smaller book. But in any case, uh, so the last little thing on our agenda is just uh, Venable Upekananda will share a few words about Bonte. Take it away, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I pay homage to the Buddha, and I pay homage to venerable sirs that are attending, and thank you all for attending. Um, I think it's pretty remarkable that we're here together a year after his passing. Um, as a Sangha, we're here to celebrate the life of this remarkable man. Yeah, he touched our hearts and our lives in so many wonderful ways. And I'm very fond of him, and his teachings will always be a part of my life. He reminded me to always appreciate the present moment and to strive to live in loving kindness through action, through the actions of what we thought, our words, and how we uh, engage with people. I thought it was pretty remarkable, uh, his way of teaching. Um, he was always to the point and every single thing he said was like incredibly insightful. One of the most simplest, but yet most profound reminders for me was always that he, um, and this is the first time I ever met him. I was in uh, the dining hall in Damasuka, and he came in, sat down for lunch in this table, and he was looking at everybody, and he saw me, and he said, smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He believed that a smile could transform any single moment. And his own smile that we could see in all these pictures. Thank you so much, Kirsten, for bringing those all back up. But you saw his smile just radiated and just lit up the room wherever he went. He had an, amend uh, an immense and wonderful sense of humor. Uh, I'm not sure who it was that just mentioned something, but you know, you saw uh, on the chat. You know, he was always very kind and loving to everyone. This child wanted to, you know, play around, play around. Yeah, I remember the story that he had, uh, you know, he would share about the pig that would jump into his back seat of his truck. And he had this cheerful laugh as he told us about this antics about the pig. He used stories like that to remind us to find joy and amusement in the unexpected quirks of life and everything that we engage with. For 40 years, he dedicated himself to mastering meditation. And what he left with us was this beautiful and straight and direct to the point way of seeing how our mind is in an unwholesome state 
and turn it into a wholesome state, the six R's. I know we all fondly uh, have that in our minds and we'll ever forget that. He made meditation simple and accessible for everyone. And I think that was a huge gift. He would take complex things, ideas, and he would just distill them and make them clear and practical for everyone. It allows us to just take mindfulness into our daily routines. And I just think what a great legacy he left for himself and for all of us. I will always cherish his humble demeanor, the gentle and profound ways that he shared his wisdom. Well, we've taken this into account, you know, in his memories today. I think, you know, it's a reminder for us to embrace the present moment, to smile, and to find joy in the little things, just as he taught us to do it. Sadhu, sadhu. Thank you, sadhu. thank you. Mm -hmm. I'd like to thank Bhante Kusala for joining us today. Venerable Upekananda and all you folks. So may Twim go forever. <laughs> no, that's not it. May Twim live life. Live and Twim. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, David. Thank you.